The grand finale of America's 30-year-old space shuttle program is underway. It's been about six hours since the clouds parted and Atlanta soared into the sky. A flawless historic launch. The firing chain is armed. 15. Go for main engine start. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and liftoff. The final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental journey into history. 24 seconds into the flight, roll program complete. Atlantis now heads down, wings level on the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Space Station. 40 seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines throttling back to 72% of rated performance in the bucket, reducing stress on the shuttle as it goes transonic for the final time. Engines now revving up, standing by for the throttle up call. Capcom Barry Wilmore, a transducer, instrumentation only, no action required. Atlantis now 15 miles in altitude, already 16 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, one minute 40 seconds into the flight. Atlantis flexing its muscles one final time. Atlantis traveling almost 2,600 miles an hour, 21 miles in altitude, 24 miles downrange. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. The main engine steering the shuttle on a pinpoint path to its preliminary orbit. Two minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis already traveling 3,200 miles an hour, 35 miles in altitude, 50 miles downrange. The propulsion officer reports the orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited. Atlantis kicking on its afterburners for one minute, 23 seconds for the final phase of powered flight. Let's bring in CNN's veteran of covering shuttle launches. John Zarella joins us from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Just, you know, it just never fails to kind of be so cool watching that, whether you're watching it live uh, on TV or taped on TV, but better yet, where you are. So the launch kind of carries itself. Yeah. I feel like you just don't need any Falderall around the launch. Tell us what's planned for when the uh, shuttle returns. Well, you know, it's, it's funny that, uh, briefly, that, you know, I talked to one of the, the shuttle astronauts a while ago, uh, Alvin Drew, who flew on Discovery, you know, and he was telling me, you know, speaking of this moment, that uh, down the road there's going to be a nostalgia for these vehicles, and people are going to look back in 20, 30 years, and they're going to say, were we ever so audacious? to build a spacecraft like this that could fly into orbit like a rocket and then land like a plane back on a runway. You and I, Candy, will probably never in our lifetime see a vehicle like this again. Now, when it comes back on the 20th or possibly the 21st of the month uh, back to Earth, uh, when it lands here at the Kennedy Space Center, Commander Chris Ferguson will call wheel stop. And NASA is hoping that after they safe the vehicle, uh, they will allow uh, all, of the all of the workers, the shuttle workers, 
challenge to actually go out to the launch pad and uh, and get one final look, touch the vehicle one final time before uh, you know it's retired and uh, and sent to the the museum. And of course, Atlantis is going to be here at the uh, at the museum at the Kennedy Space Center. But they got a lot of work in the next 12 days. They've got a rendezvous with the International Space Station uh, in two days, uh, and then they've got to offload all kinds of cargo. NASA had a shot up just a minute ago that showed inside the cargo bay where they're carrying thousands of pounds, basically to stock the pantry and the refrigerator on the uh, the International Space Station for about the next year because, you know, this is it. No more shuttle flights and all of the, the smaller vehicles that can go up there cannot carry anywhere near the capacity of cargo that uh, can be carried by the space shuttle. Candy? John, I'm told you've covered more than 70 of these, so... I, I, I got to yeah. imagine this one's sort of special simply because it's the last, but compare these uh, to the others you've seen. Yeah. Well, you know, and here's that picture of inside the shuttle cargo bay. There's a live shot. Well, now it's gone again, but NASA <laughs> had a live shot in the cargo bay uh, of the car, of the carrier, of course, uh, that's got all that equipment in. I'll tell you this what it came down to today as I was watching it, and it finally hit me as the orbiter, as the shuttle cleared the tower. Uh, I, I, you know, every other launch that you come up for, you sit here and you go, there's another one. I know I'll see another one. Uh, this time, as it was clearing the tower, I'm thinking to myself, that's it. There is not going to be another one. I'm not going to see another one of these spectacular launches. Uh, uh, and uh, so that was really kind of what was going by, uh, through my mind. They're all spectacular. They're all unique. Uh, the night launches are something that, uh, you know, uh, just the sky lights up. It turns to day. They're fabulous. You know, early morning launch. Every one of them is, is, is a little bit unique. And there's that live picture uh, from the shuttle Atlantis of the cargo bay. That big cylinder there in the center, that's where all the, 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 the goods are being stored. What you're seeing at the right there is that uh, the, the arm, the shuttle's uh, arm. And in the back, you can see the tail section of the shuttle. So looking from front to back there uh, as they're traveling at about 17,500 miles an hour, you know, racing as fast as they can to catch up to the space station. Candy. John Zarella, you are going to miss this, I can tell. Thank you so much. Yes, I am. After liftoff, the action shifted to Johnson Space Center in Texas, where NASA is tracking every move of Atlantis and its crew. And that's where we find CNN's Ed Lavendera. Ed. Hi, Candy. Well, listening to John talk about covering 70 of these reminds me of why I like to joke that I call John Zarella Yoda here at, at CNN, but uh, he's definitely been around, been around a long time. But, you know, here in Mission Control in Houston, the Johnson Space Center is where hundreds, thousands of people are that behind-the-scenes support. Those astronauts get all that glory when they're walking out to the launch pad and, and, and lifting off. But it's the, the men and women who work here in Mission Control uh, who work around the clock uh, to get that shuttle up in the air safely and back into and back down on the ground here to earth safely as well these are bittersweet days for all of the people here in the houston area who work for this shuttle program and just after that launch we were able to speak with the flight director richard jones who's talked about what an amazing day this was for him this is richard jones flight director of the last shuttle launch that we've seen today what was it like sitting there Oh gosh. Uh, well, even before we lifted off, I was, <laughs> I was a, a bundle of nerves. The fact that you knew the whole world was watching today as closely as they've ever, ever been, did, did you, did that sink in at any point? Was, was that <laughs> no. ever in the back of your mind? No, it's sinking in right now as I'm talking to you, <laughs> but uh, no, absolutely not. I was, um, in this room, you kind of learn to live in the bubble a little bit. So everything that we're doing, it, it just, it fades to the to the background you know we know a lot of people are watching but um, it, it, it becomes background noise and so I wasn't foc focusing on anything except my job at the time you were talking to the team in there a little while ago you got emotional yeah I did uh, I wasn't expecting that until the very end um, and it's because I'm saying goodbye to a lot of a lot of my uh, a lot of my coworkers, and so I've been in the trenches with them for a very long time and just saying goodbye to them it uh, it hurts so it, it came it came rushing to me what did you want them to take away from that the theme there was the past the present and the future and we're just a little a little part of it we're right now in, in the present and uh, there will be others of us to come and so just uh, relish the moment
this room in a few days will be quiet for the foreseeable future, won't it? Yeah, it will be. It will be. But again, be hard for people. It's uh, it's it's part of our transition. It's up to us to make sure it doesn't stay quiet for very long. You haven't seen the launch. No, I haven't. <laughs> the crazy thing about this, there's, there's not a monitor around you right there that actually shows you the actual video of the launch. Once I get home, yeah, I'll, I'll go look at, uh, at the replays and, and see how well and how it went. It, it's, uh, I'm expecting to see a beautiful, beautiful launch. I can attest to it. It looked great. Thank you. Congratulations, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Candy, it was really amazing to watch these people work here in Mission Control this morning. About 30 minutes before the launch, there was a lot of tension growing in that room. They weren't quite sure whether or not that weather was going to cooperate. And then just about two or three minutes before the launch, you could see Richard Jones start to calm down. He had been pacing around, walking back and forth, scratching his head. In fact, at one point, said, just asked everybody to be quiet a second so he could think. They're making those finals, final decisions. And he said it was a, a great experience to get uh, the shuttle Atlantis up into space. Candy? Lots and lots of history and lots of work being done. Ed Lavendera, thanks so much out of the Johnson Absolutely. Space Center for us. We appreciate yeah. it. You need to stay with CNN for complete coverage of this final shuttle mission and an in-depth look at what's next for NASA tonight. A CNN special investigation beyond Atlantis, the next frontier. That's at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific, right here on CNN. Syria has tried to keep a lid on information trickling.